You guys heavily enjoyed my first sex tips video. And this is kind of like a segue to a part two of sex tips, things that will better you in sex. And what betters you in sex if you have been paying attention to my videos? <laughs> And for those that haven't, it shows. Education. I'm your sex ed teacher. I have been nominated. It is what it is. Sex ed is really not doing much for all of you. So here I am. You're welcome. We're going to talk about the erogenous zones on your man's body. An erogenous zone, just so we're all clear, is basically a zone or area on your body that is sensitive to sexual stimulation. This can really spice up your sex life and in turn make you better in sex. A lot of us actually don't really know where the erogenous zones are on each other's bodies. And that's a big no-no. We're about to change that. I'm gonna kind of go from the top to the bottom ish so let's start with the scalp we all know what a good fucking scalp massage does to both of the ladies and men all right the tingles the sensations harder softer this is where your acrylic nails really come into play ladies they're not really fun for other areas of the body but this is your time to shine i want you to focus on the scalp that could be while you're making out and kissing i love like running my hands through my man's hair or head sometimes like grabbing his hair giving a little tight pull and let letting go not being too aggressive too hard i'm not trying to inflict pain unless you're into that but for the most part i just want him to get like a tingly sexy sensation and it's really nonchalant and makes it seem like you oops accidentally touched his scalp and gave him a little massage while you're making out with him and it was just because you're embracing a moment when in reality you know exactly what the fuck you're doing down to the lippies of course we're kissing why do we kiss it really does arouse us in general because you're really close it's intimate but there's also a lot of nerves on the lips right we're really sensitive around the lip and mouth area i'm not going to just talk about lips i'm going to talk about the tongue as well excellent place to have fun on and in okay and you're probably thinking eden what like i know lips kissing but like what am i gonna do with the tongue lick each other's tongue suck on each other's tongue slightly a little bit and you can throw that into a makeout session or while you're having sex suck on the tongue a little bit that drives men wild and if they haven't experienced it you'll be the first you're welcome <laughs> Even little nibbles on the lips can also create like a little bit of that tingle sensation. It can be really hot and sexy. Again, you don't want to bite a chunk of his lip off. So be mindful. Start off modestly and work your way up. I'm going to take a little pause before I continue. This is my biggest sex tip that I mentioned before is be modest and not modest in like sex in general because like sex and modesty does not really go together. But there is a way of being tastefully sexual and seductive and the key behind seducing and the the key behind arousing and teasing and playing and creating tension and building creativity and making your sexual experience different is by always switching up the tempo of the climb. Don't walk up that ladder or like run up that the fucking staircase of like all the things that you want to do in bed right away. I want you to go up a little bit, take it up a notch, do something new, something different, something more spicy, and then bring it back down to basic sex. Back and forth. Suck on the tongue. Stop sucking on the tongue, right? Don't always go full force into something. You want to ease into it. Feel it out. This will also allow you to learn about your partner. That way you're not going from zero to 100 and then going back down to zero. If they don't like it, it's kind of awkward. You're building your way up to see what the sweet spot is here. And that's what I mean by all of these erogenous zones. I want you to really be modest with them. Try them out. Don't necessarily commit to them unless your partner is really enjoying it and you want to do that. Give them a taste. You know what I mean? Like one bite at a time, baby, not the whole fucking cake. So from the lips, let's talk about the neck. It's kind of similar to the scalp situation. The neck is a secret weapon. For the majority of guys I've hooked up with, I'm not going to lie to you, the neck is always an area that drives them insane. And some of them don't even know how powerful powerful the neck area is and guys if you're watching this utilize the neck like I wish more of the guys I hooked up with understood the power of the neck and ear area and these are two erogenous zones the nape of the neck the neck in general um, lower neck and then as well as the ear so let's just hit all of those at once rubbing your hands holding the neck when you're kissing with your fingernails a little bit up and down unless they're super ticklish again everything is very very specific to the person that you are with and having fun with so be mindful you know licking as well is just really nice it gives a different sensation the warmth of the mouth really does create those like tingles up and down your spine you know and it's just a very hot sexy experience 
the ear. So this is, ugh, I don't gatekeep, but this one I wanted to gatekeep and it's not like nobody knows about it, but just nobody knows how to do it right. So I've mastered the combination. You want to kiss up the neck. Okay. And then you want to get to the ear. What you're going to do is you're going to kiss the low but don't kiss the ear hole okay i just fingered my fucking ear for you guys don't kiss the ear hole it's very loud okay and it can throw people off and it can make shit not sexy and i guys have done that to me too because they're like trying to like <sighs> like in my ear to create that like warmth tingling sensation but when you do it like that and aggressively and you're over exaggerating it it's not hot it's not cute the whole point of a lot of these zones that i'm about to tell you about for the most part is make it just seem natural like oh i just ended up here oh i just discovered this area oh my hand just like wanted to go here and i'm not even paying attention to what i'm doing but really mm, you knew this all along so i start by kissing the lobe and then i work my way to nibbling the earlobe and what I do is I put my teeth on it lightly and then I just tug on the lobe a little bit and while I'm doing that I'm obviously breathing because I'm fucking not dead <laughs> that little bit of breath ends up creating those tingles in the ear while stimulating the lobe and all of these little points on your ear guys go wild for this for the most part again not every guy but the vast majority of guys that I've done this to we're like, oh, what the fuck did you just do to me? And I'm like, mm, magic. <laughs> We're going to get down to the nipples. Yes, guys have nipples too. So nipples are an erogenous zone on a man. We hear that the nipples on women is a huge erogenous zone. Maybe not to the degree that it is for a man, but it's still an erogenous zone on a man. So we can use that to stimulate it however you might. For me, like the only way I really like to incorporate the nipples on a man is just like holding or touching his chest. Um, sometimes kissing down his chest. We can go over a nipple or two. Belly button. I know some people are really, really fucking weirded out by belly buttons. A lot of guys have lint stuck there from like 17 years ago. So let's clean that up, please. <laughs> Always do a belly button check. Like I check my belly button all the time. Is that weird? Like I will shower, whatever. And we're like, we're cleaning and checking the belly button. Like, I don't know why that's not. Is that not part of your body? Like, come on. You know, obviously if you're going to play within that region he is going to get extremely aroused and turned on because you're very close to his penis so the belly button is a nice way of teasing and arousing him and getting close and down there without going straight for the dick sometimes building that tension is important and is in your benefit ladies as well because the more aroused and excited they get the less work you have to do honestly when you're having sex not saying that it is work and it should never feel like work but you know what I mean it's nice to see them really enjoy the foreplay and build up to that and slow things down I think that really allows you to have more intimate moments um, they don't necessarily have to be romantic but they can be very sexy and really make or break a sexual experience the belly button is great for food play and if you are into that we can put a little whipped cream, a little chocolate in the belly button all the way down, a lick up and down, have fun. The stomach area, like that lower stomach area on guys, I don't know why I love it so much. Like I think it's a very underrated part of the body. I don't, I'm not saying like I love a stomach, but I'm just saying like a, the lower part, like, oh, like I just, I love kissing that area. It's weird. I don't know why. Maybe that's why I like it. I like a little, I like, I love teasing my men. So now that we've played with the belly button, we're going to go down to, I mean, you know, his penis is an erogenous zone. So we're just going to skip that. But the scrotum, essentially his ball sack, right? The skin that protects his testes. Ball play is a video I did on a past channel before and so many people were kind of amazed by it, but also knew about it. And some guys love their balls touched. Some guys don't again. So just keep that in mind and test it out and the warmth of your hand, even lubricating your hand with spit or with lube and just even caressing the scrotum can give a different sensation than just like a dry hand on the scrotum. Your mouth, obviously even just like warm breath is exciting and tingly licking, sucking on the balls, you know, whatever, like that whole area. I can do a more in depth video because there's so much that you can do with that, that I think would benefit my ladies that want to know more about it or my gentlemen that want to know more about it. The lower back is a, an interesting spot. I find it's a hit or miss for a lot of men. It does provide that tingly sensation, but it's borderline ticklish for most people, depending on the sex position you guys are in holding onto his hips or the back, right? So if he's missionary, for example, it's like hugging his lower body and having your hands kind of caress his lower back as well, as well as his butt. A lot of guys like their butts, the butt cheeks touched. Yes. Squeezed things like that. They enjoy it. 
Hands. Okay, I have like potentially a hand fetish ish, perhaps. I don't know. Fetish is, is a big word, so not a fetish. A man's hands. Like, if you have a good hand, like, oh. And I'm not talking like purely manicured and like buttery smooth and soft. Like, that's not my jam. Could be your jam, no problem. But just like a nice big man's hands great fingers like do you know what I mean you know what I mean like I'm turning myself on right now our hands have a lot of nerve endings as well right like different parts of our fingers our finger pads right what are these called the, the pads of the fingers right yeah I, th I think I'm onto something sucking on fingers totally underrated a must suck on his fingers put them back in your mouth do what you got to do like play with them even holding each other's hands while you're having sex is yes it's a little bit more romantic but it's it feels good it's intimate it feels like a bonding experience it's really lovely don't neglect the hands just don't play with them hold them do things to them just enjoy them because sometimes they do things to you and we love it okay <laughs> so thank them the inner thigh is a fun place for like teasing before oral sex i find so like kissing up the inner thigh for a man it's an erogenous zone for sure i'm um, touching it but again is also known to be extremely ticklish for a lot of guys. So be careful of that. Some people hate being tickled. Don't disrespect that. I hate being tickled and I find it extremely painful and annoying and just uncomfortable. So I get the people that don't want to be tickled. It happens. Move on or apply more pressure. On ticklish areas, you want to apply slightly more pressure. Again, I'm not saying fucking you know, grip him and like rip his skin or inflict pain. But I am saying just be a little bit more with the pressure that you decide to put on that area. So like if I'm kissing, I'm going to just like, you know, cause it's nice and, and chewy and fatty there. Like I'm going to, you know, press a little bit harder. I'm going to like, like a little bit deeper. Like I'm just going to be a little bit more heavy than I would on other more softer areas of the body if you get what I'm saying and then I work my way up to the scrotum and I can play around with that so I'm utilizing a bunch of erogenous zones and it kind of is like a pathway to the penis so it's like da, 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 you know we're building it up the tension oh my god that feels different that feels good that feels interesting that's new and then boom we're going to talk about the perineum which is a like little patch of skin that's extremely sensitive with nerve endings between his scrotum and his butthole okay and his butt hole and all of that is definitely an erogenous zone. The male G-spot is located inside the butt. Yes, for a man. If you've got nails, please stay clear of that area. We don't want to do any damage. But this is a great area for those that want to experiment with potentially butt play on a guy but are not interested in going full throttle into that no problem work your way around this area and lick this will also show you if your man is into you know you going down there most of them are so once you're playing with the scrotum go down to the perineum area which is just like the skin dividing the scrotum area to the butt and again licking even taking your finger um, and just like touching that area too softly and gently can really stimulate sexual pleasure and elevate the experience. So definitely worth a try. Be careful with your nails. It's extremely sensitive down there. The back of the knees. It is an erogenous zone. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I haven't experimented with that area much, but I understand why it would be because even on me, I feel like that's a sensitive area. Um, even licking that area. Like that's something I'm going to try on my man and I'll report back. We'll see how it goes. If you're kissing his thighs, maybe he's standing up and you're about to perform oral sex on your knees, which is super hot. Maybe as you're like licking or kissing his thighs and working your way up, you can kind of like feel around that area. But that is like a secret spot that I feel like a lot of people don't know about, but exists. Last but not least, and something I don't want to spend too much time talking on is feet feet are again nerve endings they have pressure points on them as well that stimulate different parts of your body we know this through foot massages the body is a wild crazy place and certain areas of your body can stimulate certain systems like the circulatory system which increases blood flow you know that's what the back of the neck and ears do um, that increases blood flow and makes you feel nice the reason why i don't want to talk about feet so much because i'm actually traumatized from feet <laughs> um I was dating a guy with a foot fetish and I spoke about this on another podcast and it was extremely severe or got extremely severe and I am still uncomfortable talking about it. So I'm just being really vulnerable and straight up with you guys. Feet are great to incorporate into the bedroom if you are comfortable with it. Obviously, I myself am no longer comfortable with feet play on a man or to be done to me. So it's become a sensitive topic. 
I'm going to be doing a reveal all tell all podcast and video soon on a private channel that only a few of you will have access to down the line. And I'm working on that. So I'm just letting you know, that's why you should subscribe and stay tuned. There's a lot of juicy stuff coming that goes beyond just me being your sex ed teacher and dating coach, a lot more personal stuff. If that interests you at all, but feet, I'll tell you kind of the gist of feet, licking, sucking on the toes, massaging, all of that stuff that you would normally do to other parts of the body that can be done to feet and feet are extremely sensitive. Again, some people are extremely ticklish and are like, do not touch my feet. Some people are weirded out by feet. Don't like feet. No problem. And some people are obsessed with feet. So you just have to kind of know your partner. And by knowing that these areas are erogenous zones, you can play modestly, like I said, and see their reaction or even speak to them and have a thorough conversation about it. You know, be like, these are like spots in the body that I've heard were, were really sexually stimulating and fun and arousing. And I just wanted to know if that'd be something you're interested in me doing. You know, and a lot of these body parts we already somewhat use in our sexual experiences and endeavors right now. So we can just elevate them by spending more time. And knowing this will actually elevate your sex game a lot more than you would expect by doing big dramatic performances and doing crazy positions that's excessive and that's not sustainable long term and that's not fun to always have to think of something new to throw into the bedroom these are little tweaks that I tell you to incorporate from time to time and then go back to basic sex and then add something really quirky and fun and then go back so nobody expects you know what's going to happen next and we're not going on this really dangerous incline of okay now on to the next on to the next on to the next until you get to the point where you're like I'm bored of sex I've already done it all or I'm constantly stressed about finding the next best thing because I feel like my partner's gonna get bored and people do get greedy so we have to be careful with how much we constantly give and with you know changing it up all the time like you shouldn't it should be enjoyable it should come natural to a degree it's good to know these things for yourself so you're educated and you're confident in bed this in turn helps you when you go into the bedroom and you understand the male body or the other person's body that you are experimenting with and experiencing so this is all in your benefit I know it's sounds like I'm telling you to do all these things to your man or whatever. Like, no, I'm not telling you to do shit. I'm telling you some information that might be beneficial, might be interesting, might allow your creative juices to flow more. And if you want to incorporate it, great. If you don't, you don't. But at least you know it now for future. Ladies, did you think I was just going to forget about you? Like, no fucking way. Mm -mm. Of course, I have a woman's version to this. So the female erogenous zones video is going to come out very soon. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe so I know that you are interested in that video and I will release it. My mans, you are going to need a pen and paper because we are going to go fucking through the female body as well. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks, some things that I enjoy, some things that other women have told me they enjoy. It is going to be a really fabulous, educational, and fun video. If you haven't already, make sure you rated this podcast five large and in charge stars. It really does help my brand. It helps me. And it means the world to me. I love all of you guys. Thank you for being here and spending your time with me and I will see you back here very soon. Bye.